Today I'm talking about kobolds. Some of the smallest draconic creatures in the multiverse, kobolds display their draconic ancestry in the glint of their scales and in their roars. Legends tell of the first kobolds emerging from the Underdark near the lairs of the earliest dragons. In some lands, kobolds serve chromatic or metallic dragons, even worshipping them as divine beings. In other places, kobolds know too well how dangerous these dragons can be and help others defend against draconic destruction. Whatever their relationship to dragons, kobold scales tend to be rust colored, although the occasional Original kobold sports a scale color more akin to that of a chromatic or metallic dragon. A kobold's cry can express a range of emotion, anger, resolve, elation, fear, and more. Regardless of the emotion expressed, their cry resonates with draconic power. We are a humanoid, we are small, we, are, we have a walking speed of 30 feet, we get dark vision out to 60 feet. Our first feature is draconic cry. As a bonus action, you let out a cry at your enemies within 10 feet of you. Till the start of your next turn, you and your allies have advantage on attack rolls against any of those enemies who could hear you. You can use this trade a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus, and you regain all expended uses when you finish a long rest. Kobold Legacy is our next feature. Kobold's connection to dragons can manifest in unpredictable ways in individual kobolds. Choose one of the following legacy options for your kobold. Craftiness. We have proficiency in one of the following skills, arcana, investigation, medicine, sleight of hand, or survival. Defiance. You have advantage on saving throws to avoid or end the frightened condition on yourself. Or Draconic Sorcery. We know one cantrip from the sorcerer spell list, but we get to choose the modifier for it. So kobolds are pretty neat. They come with a very, very powerful bonus action in Draconic Cry. So if you have a class that doesn't have good uses for their bonus action, then this is a really good insert to get some good use out of that bonus action. Now that bonus action can set up a bunch of your martial allies or maybe even spellcasters that are doing spell attacks. If we're designing this character before we know who our party's gonna be, we want to take advantage of that advantage. People have talked about how this just makes the samurai's feature of giving themselves advantage pretty much worthless because now we can do it as a race. But I think something important to think about is the samurai, how they get really big damage is either with sharpshooter or with heavy weapons master because now you have advantage you can really hit those those minus fives to hit to get those big plus tens to damage and then do multiple attacks on top of that now because we're small we can't use heavy weapons to do great weapon master and because it's within 10 feet it's going to be a little difficult to use a bow to get sharpshooter off so i think that's important to mention because you know there's some nuance between the samurai and this yes on paper this just looks better but Think about the nuance. Now that being said, this does open up a really interesting build to me where you do take sharpshooter with a sh with a short bow as a kobold and you run in 10 feet and then you can use your bonus action, set up your attacks, get your advantage, big damage, and then have like mobility. It's kind of like this mobile close ranged archer build. It's, it's not a build I've ever thought about anywhere else, but the kobold really enables it. That sounds pretty fun. That's something I'm gonna take a look at. But even if you're say a druid, you know, you're casting your fight winning spell, what else are you doing? Well, you might maneuver yourself closer, use this draconic cry to set up your fighter and your rogue, and then try and get as far away as you can. So it does have options outside of being a marshal yourself, but I think it really does shine. Being your marshal, being a close ranged fighter, or that sharpshooter build I talked about. Now as for Kobold Legacy, it gives us three options, so let's weigh those options against each other. We have a skill proficiency, we have resistance to the frightened condition, and we have a cantrip. If we're talking just pure power levels, I'm thinking that Defiance, the, the resistance to the frightened condition, is probably going to be the best more often than not. And I say that because I think Draconic Sorcery can be replaced by some more martial aspects of us, which is encouraged by our Draconic Cry. Now that being said, some races are really going to appreciate a good cantrip. You know, taking Firebolt as a cleric or as a bard can be fantastic. So that's, that's a good option in our back pocket. And craftiness, you know, if we're doing a skill-based build that wants to spread out proficiencies, I can see taking it there. Or for flavor, but overall I think that one is the weakest. So this is just taking a look at a race. We've done that with many other races in this playlist here. Check it out. I want to hear your thoughts about kobolds. Did I miss anything or what kind of character would you build with it? Let me know in the comments down below. And I hope you have yourself a lovely day.